In this video, I'm going to show you how I like to use the boundary brush, which can be a great tool to create more complex shapes and patterns for your models in just a few seconds. But there are four more sculpt mode features that I like to use in my projects that 90%, let's say 95% of people don't know about that could save you hours of work and headache, which we're going to cover in this video as well. So the boundary brush basically lets you attach your brush to an edge of whatever model you want to sculpt on. One thing to keep in mind for the boundary brush is that the edge or the geometry on the edge is clean. Otherwise the geometry can kind of glitch out and the boundary brush doesn't really exactly know how it's supposed to interpret the edge. So now that we have these two objects, we can go into sculpt mode and then we can use the boundary brush. It looks like this. So these are the basic settings. What happens if we now use the boundary brush is we can see that there's this arm or axis. What that means is it selects the whole edge and then creates a rotation point, which is basically like the little white head at the end of this white line. So now if we just hold left click and then we push the mouse up or down, we can also go sideways, which is a little quicker. We can see that we can bend the edge. This, for example, we can use to, I don't know, create like a bowl, there you go. We could also, you know, use it to fold something, I guess. There you go, and you can always see that, depending on how big the brush is, the, uh, that's how long the, I guess, bending point is gonna be as well, or the axis is gonna be as well. Now, of course, we can also change a few things here. We could change the fall off, for example, to something like linear. What that means is that we can now create a smoother, we can bend it a little smoother, I guess, and make it rounder. So basically the fall off that is applied to the brush changes the way that you can bend the edge around. It only selects edges that are basically connected. If you go into edit mode here, we can see the edge flow ends right there. But if you, for example, go to the sphere here or the circle, we can see that the edge flow goes all the way around the circle, which is why the whole edge is being selected. That's what I used for my recent Yish Dollar choker cloth to bend it around the metal buckle that is at the back of her neck. Another thing you can do is you can of course change a few of these settings. We can switch it to a cloth simulation as well. Uh, if you set it, for example, now to a different deformation mode, for example, grab, I think is a good one for cloth, for example, if you, for example, create a blanket, you can now grab this edge here and then you can just grab it and push it over there. So now we can see we can select the whole edge and we can apply different deformations to this. The ones that I use the most are basically bent with different fall offs and maybe I'll use the grab function as well sometimes. There's one more thing we can change, which is the boundary fall off. The boundary fall off basically affects how you select the edge, I guess, of your model. For constant, it selects the whole edge. Then we can change it to brush radius, which only selects the, the edge where the brush is. It doesn't indicate that here. But if we now use it, we can see we can only push that area here that basically the brush is over. If you want to see that with the geometry, we can see here it does basically the same. Uh, the next one is the loop. What that basically does is it looks at the brush radius and then basically just creates an array of that brush and applies that to the whole edge. If we make the brush smaller, we can see we get even more bend bendings. We can change that boundary fall off as well from loop to loop and invert, which means that it basically always inverts it for every second application of the deformation target, I guess. The problem is, of course, if you want to have very, very small little um, waves at the end, that isn't really possible if we make the brush very small, because then we only really affect this little uh, edge, but we probably want to affect almost everything all the way up to the other side. The way we can do that is we can extend this line basically past the brush cursor. The way we do that is with the boundary origin. For example, if, if I set that to one, that basically doubles the length of this line. If we do that by three, we multiply by three and there you go, we have three lengths for the boundary origin. So 10 should be a good one to reach almost the end. So now if we apply the brush, we can see we affect the whole edge all the way to over there, even though the brush is very small. And that is basically how I created the skirt for my recent project. Usually I use sphere to create the basic shape. You can, for example, also make the brush a little smaller and then effect, uh, apply it again to create a more, you know, a wilder shape, I guess, make it maybe look a little bit more interesting to create different patterns for the different parts of cloth of the dress. So the boundary brush is really, really great to create different patterns, repeating patterns that are pretty hard to create by just sculpting them. But there are four more hidden features that I like to use that can save you a lot of time and headache during your sculpting session that I want to show you as well. 
The first feature I want to talk about is how you can change the standard brushes to create different textures or change just the way the general tools work. So for example, I like to use the clay subs brush and sometimes I like to, for example, for my recent project, I like to create this sort of sewing band. First, I change from the standard fall off here to the custom fall off. So now we can basically create our custom texture without having to look for like a very complex texture if it doesn't have to be like 100% correct. We can now change this graph to look something more like this, for example. We've also done that for the Pikachu sculpt that you can see probably at the end of this video if you want to follow that. If I change the strength, you can see how the brush changes. It now has this ring effect which means if we apply it, we can create this very, very interesting pattern, which already looks like a sort of sewing band. So if we change the spacing, the spacing basically means how often the brush is applied to the surface, for example, uh, 200%, it then gets applied way less frequently, which means it creates the, this pattern of like an array. This, it creates this array pattern. The way I like to use this, for example, is for if I want to sculpt pores or even draw pores, on my characters. The way you could do that is we could use the crease brush or maybe even just use the draw sharp brush. And then we can change the spacing to maybe 100%. And then if we apply it, you can see we create these pores. The one tip for that is if you do it like this, you can see we can create a pattern really, really quickly. But what I would rather do is I would go in circles. This way you can create a more random pattern, which will probably look a little bit more natural and more realistic. Another thing we can do is we can, for example, use the sculpt draw brush or, and change it to a spherical fall off. And then we can change the stroke method to anchored. Anchored basically means that you, by left clicking, you determine where you want to apply the brush. And then you can pull your brush outwards to determine how big the cursor is supposed to be. This way, for example, you can create these buttons and you can basically add a lot of detail to your character sculpt or any other sculpts without having to spend ages trying to find the right brushes, for example, or textures. The next one is especially useful for characters. Sometimes you just want to create a quick project and you don't want to go through the whole process of retopologizing and then rigging it to just create a pose. You can pose it without having to rig it. The way you can do that is, of course, with the pose tool. We can say where you want to affect the edge and then it determines where it basically creates the rotation origin. It is very, very unpredictable with where it places the uh, the cursor. You kind of have to hope that Blender finds a good spot to place the rotation origin. It kind of always tries to find the rotation origin at the border of the cursor. So here this might work quite well, but it still looks kind of weird. The way you can make this way, way better and way more reliable is by switching from rotation origins topology to rotation origins face sets. Now it basically looks at where your cursor currently is and what face sets are basically kind of closest to the cursor border and takes that as the rotation origin. So what you could do now is use the face sets brush, for example, draw a face set. Make sure that if you want to continue one, you have to hold control. If we go down here, we can see it selects this border, for example, there you go, that we just drew. And now if we rotate it, you can see we, draw, we rotate around perfectly around that face set. And this way you can just quickly with face sets, rake your character, how I did it here. So now we can just go in here and we can use the brush and then we applied whoop, and then we perfectly rotate around the face set and we can use that to very quickly pose this hand. One thing to note though, it doesn't only rotate the finger, it also twists it a little bit. So depending on how you look at the finger, for example, it rotates differently, which is where the next feature comes into play. The transformation tools, the way this, for example, works is, of course, if you select them, you can see we get this uh, gizmo wherever the pivot point is. We can, first of all, use the mask brush to select the arm. There you go. We can also, of course, make it smoother. And then we can use the rotation tool. You can see if we now just use the rotation tool, it just rotates it from up here. But what we can do is we can go into sculpt, set pivot, and then mask border. And this way you can basically, you know, place the pivot point where the border of the mask is. So now if we use it, we can see we can rotate it very, very similar to the face set. But the thing with this tool is you can determine in which rotation you want to rotate. And then you can change the position and then you, you can adjust the rotation again so we can have more precision with how you want to rotate the object of, of course then you would kind of have to remove the mask again and then adjust the weird deformations here of course you can also use the other tr transformation tools using the move tool to move it higher and then you could of course use the scale tool for example to make the hands bigger 
but of course it's annoying to always go in here into these scope settings and set these things so what you can also do is you can go and right click on each of these settings and say add to quick favorites you can press q and then you could say pivot to mass border and there you go you have very quickly moved that pivot over there and you can change your scope however you want to change it you can also place the pivot point in a specific spot so here for example q pivot to service under cursor and then you can go in here and you say hey i want to rotate it like this so in my opinion you have more precision with the transformation tools but if you want to pose your character very quickly i would use the pose brush and the last one I want to talk about is how you can smooth the surface of your character without losing volume. The way I like to work is I start with a very low res scope. I usually divide it by four, for example. So if you do that and rematch, you can see now we have more geometry, but the new geometry inherits the shape of the previously existing geometry, which means that if you can now go in here, we can smooth this, but we also lose a little bit of volume here, as you can see. A way we can avoid that is by changing the smooth brush deformation mode from Laplacian to surface. And then if we change the shape preservation, for example, 2.75, and then maybe the iteration to five, we can see that we can smooth the surface without losing volume. Of course, this isn't going to make it as smooth as with the Laplacian mode, but it's still better than nothing, I would say. But especially if you want to keep definition in different face areas, for example, for the eyes or lips, then I would recommend using a higher shape preservation. And if you're not happy with the results of this smooth mode, there's one more you can try, which is the slide relax tool. The basic setting, what it does, you can move geometry without affecting the shape. But what you can also do is you can press shift to smooth without losing the shape. But if you, for example, want to get rid of these creasing artifacts, you can do, use the slide relax brush and stretch them out again. And you can still kind of keep the crease shape in there without having to pinch the topology that much. And if you use all these tools in your workflow, you should be able to create characters or whatever you want to scope way, way faster. Of course, if you have any more questions, make sure to put them in the comments. Thank you for watching. Maybe I'll see you next time. See ya.